And in this problem here, we want to find the roots, or rather we want to find the equation of a quadratic that has these roots, positive and negative 3i. And let's just recall that the roots of any quadratic are going to be given by x minus r1 times x minus r2. Here's my factored form, uh, and r1 and r2, both of these things, there's a comma there, uh, those are my roots. So remember, factored form helps us to find the roots of the quadratic. We're going to be kind of leveraging that factored form if we're already starting with these roots. So that means that uh, the quadratic will equal 0 uh, when one of my roots of positive 3i is plugged into this first factor, and I'll have an x plus 3i for this second factor. Now we want to find the full equation, not just when this thing equals 0. So I might as well just substitute this out for my y right now. So my quadratic equation is y equals x minus 3i times x plus 3i. I can check this by setting each factor equals 0, and I should get that same result there. Now I can stop here. This is kind of my factored form of my quadratic. But let's say I want to take this thing all the way out into standard form and not have these uh, three i's in my factors. Let's do that in uh, blue here. If I multiply both of these binomials together, I get y equals x squared plus 3ix uh, minus 3ix minus 9i squared. And conveniently, these two terms, they will cancel out to 0. And I'll have y equals x squared minus 9i squared. Uh, at this point, we just have to remember that the i squared simplifies to negative 1. So if I substitute in y equals x squared minus 9, if I substitute in that negative 1 for the i squared, my final answer in standard form will be y equals x squared plus 9. And that is my standard form equation. And now this should make sense in relationship with the graph, or rather, uh, yeah, with the graph of this thing. If I were to graph this quadratic, I would expect to see something like this. Uh, a, a quadratic or a parabola that's been shifted up 9 units. We'll see this has no x-intercepts. It should make sense then that we have both imaginary roots for my solutions for this quadratic.